SpongeBob SquarePants Mystery Stage Fright. Chapter 24 That's how this crazy mixed-up business of detection goes! Sometimes you get them, sometimes they get away! And sometimes you're just grouping around in the dark searching for a light switch or the nearest way out! Come on! SpongeBob said to Sandy. Maybe we can still catch up with them! Grouping their way through the darkness, they somehow made their way out of the balcony through the lobby down the main floor aisle up the stairs, across the stage, and to the stage door. They burst through the door and looked around. With the alley lit up by street lamps, it was much lighter outside than inside the theater. But they saw no one. Should we go Should we go looking for them? Sandy asked. Maybe we, maybe we can still catch up with them. SpongeBob considered it. I don't think so. We have no idea which way they went. They could be anywhere in Bikini Bottom. Did you see the person at all? Not a glimpse. It was just too dark. They both slumped, disappointed. It had seemed as though they were right on the trail of the culprit, but once again they'd come up empty-handed. Could that have been the theater's ghost? SpongeBob wondered. Or maybe the monster that was out on Old Man Jenkins' farm? Could be, Sandy said slowly. But there's no real hard evidence for that conclusion. It was just too dark. I'm telling you, Sandy, SpongeBob said. Sometimes you don't go on evidence. You go on instinct. In the end, that's what usually solves cases. They stood there a moment, thinking about their different approaches to the business of catching bad guys, and Sandy spoke. So, what do we do now? We go home, SpongeBob said. And we sleep on it. SpongeBob and Sandy returned to the theater the next day. They asked around to see if there had been any acts of sabotage in the night. No one knew of any. In the costume department, Beluga said everything seemed to be exactly the way she left it. Maybe we chased off that pesky side wonder before they had a chance to kick up a ruckus, Sandy suggested as they left the little costume room. Maybe, SpongeBob said. Let's check with Remora! They walked into the makeup room. Remora was sorting through a box of used eyeliner pencils, deciding which ones were still useful and which ones were too stubby. She tossed the short ones into the trash. Hi, Remora! Sandy said. Remora looked up from her task. Oh, hi! Everything here seem okay? SpongeBob asked. Anything been messed with? I don't think so, Remora said. Everything seems to be in order. Ramora! Dorado yelled from the stage. I excuse me, Ramora said, hurrying off to see what the director wanted. Sandy watched her go. So, everything's okay in the makeup department. Same for the costume department. Nobody's found any new problems. Sure looks like the bad eggs skedaddled without breaking anything last night. SpongeBob nodded, thinking. Seems so. Then, what's our next move? Sandy asked. Just wait around for something else bad to happen? Still thinking, Spongebob idly wandered over to a set of shelves against the wall. The shelves were full of wigs sitting on hard foam heads. There was one empty foam head. The rest held men's and women's wigs in all shades and colors. Brunette, black, blonde, red, even blue, green, and orange. Wigs! Spongebob said to himself quietly. I love wigs! He picked up a rainbow-hued clown wig and pulled it on. It fit snugly around his square head. SpongeBob, what in tarnation are you doing? Admiring himself in the mirror, SpongeBob said, Just trying on a wig! I like how it looks and feels. Kinda squeezes my head. How does me think? Really? Sandy asked, dumbfounded. Isn't that look a little silly for a detective? Being silly is a big part of who I am, he explained. Whether I'm frying up Krabby Patties or solving mysteries. Before SpongeBob could finish, Martin Gerardo appeared in the door. Detective! He hissed, having heard Sandy. Is that what you are? Is that why you've been snooping around bothering cast and crew with all your nosy questions? Questions? Sandy asked, trying to stall for time. What questions? 
I'm just trying to repair this here lot, she said, unscrewing a light bulb and then quickly screwing it back in. Oh, I don't know, the director said sarcastically. The questions you were asking Ramora, for example. I called her con to consult on a question about makeup, and she tells me you two were in her room asking if anything had been messed with, and that you asked her a bunch of questions after the mix-up with Belinda Seahag makeup. Beluga says you've been poking around the caution department, too. Everywhere I turn, you two are interrogating someone instead of fixing lights and cleaning up messes. SpongeBob decided it was time to come clean. They really had no choice. Maybe if they told Dorado they were private eyes, he'd be grateful that they were trying to save a show and the Dripper Lane Theater. Okay, you got us, he said smiling. We're detectives, private eyes. Sorry for misleading you, but we thought an undercover operation would be the best way to... You've tainted the space of artistry with your dishonesty, Dorado said. He pointed dramatically toward the exit. Get out of my theater. But we're only trying to help, Sandy argued. The only way that you can help the show, the director declared, is to get out of here and keep your mouths shut about everything you've seen. But first, give me back our, our ridiculous wig. Stay tuned for chapter 25 coming up soon.